congregation of souls out there in the spinning dizzy from Messier 63 straight to the tadpole. This is Bo Several bringing you the latest, the greatest, and the up to datest. My fairgrounds followers have probably heard this already, but if not, you have now. Earth Central has passed a new curfew for all humans restricted to the hours of natural sunlight. <laughs> to those of you playing along at home, that's found in section six. Paragraph 7 of the latest batch of redrafts of the human Fulgenari Friendship Agreement. Now I hear you saying, Bo, we're on a space station. We don't get any natural sunlight. Well, they thought of that too, my runcible spoons. All humans living in artificially compounded orbital environments will adopt the daylight hours of the capital of the nearest human planetary settlement. Uh So now you're asking, where's that, Bo? Well, for us here on the fairgrounds, that would be Bellabog Alpha over Ron Way. And now I hear you saying, hey, Bo, how the fritter we fairground is supposed to know what time it is on Bellabog? Well, that's a really intuitive question. I like that some of you are thinkers out there. We do have a great audience, don't we, Tess? Really, really deep thinkers. There are no beautiful surfaces without a terrible depth, Bo. Tess with balls, quoting Nietzsche. I love it. Well, fortunately, folks, those helpful zoods on the local branch of the Fugunari Human Friendship Advisory Committee have installed grow lights all over the station. Yeah, you've probably been wondering what those super bright beams every two to six feet are doing up there. Well, now you know. And when those lights are on, well, folks, that's what we call the daytime. Uh, And when they're off, better scurry on home. It's sleeping time. You're feeling very sleepy. So for my human listeners, you're all going to want to get into power naps in a big way. Because according to my galactic almanac here, the days in New Hoskovo last a whopping three hours and 23 minutes this time of year. All right, we've got a lot more coming up for you at the top of the next hour. We'll be discussing all sorts of schness about life, liberty, and more importantly, what that liberty thing even has to do with happiness. I mean, rules of three, folks. Can we have one without the other? Are they separate but equal? Because I know a lot of folks who would take offense at that. We're just asking questions is all. No wrong answers here, just a lively debate among good friends. The truth springs from arguments among friends, Bo. Tess with balls, David Hume that time. Thanks, Tess. So stick with us, folks. I promise you won't want to miss what we have to say. But right now, Bo is leaving you with this. Be good to yourself today. You deserve it. Although you should maybe incorporate some of that great Fuginari philosophy as well, am I right? A lot mm. of history there. And we should always be thinking, what am I doing, really doing, to mm. grow? Remember, out of one, seven. Okay, that's enough of that. Not a fan of the bow show, huh? I gotta admit, when I first heard him, I thought he was talking a lot of blorch pucky. I'd say that's a pretty fair assessment. What changed your mind? Oh, nothing. He's a grade A putz, but he did get sponsored by that plushie of the month club, the bi-monthly K9 Chew Toy subscription service. That kept me listening for a bit so I could get the discount codes. You listen to hours of bedwetting jokes and crypto-specious diatribes just to get a coupon? Hey, this is not just any coupon. Those subscription services usually cost an arm and a leg, which Miss Sophie bites off within minutes of getting the thing. And this is a quality product, incredibly soft with these big cartoonish eyes and adorable faces. It's so cute watching her rip their little innards out. Isn't that right, girl? Yes, yes it is. Great, I bet she heard me say plushy, and now she's going to expect another box when we get home. Seriously, kid, it's adorable. I'll send you a picture of her eviscerating one of them. You really don't have to do that. Well, I guess cute is in the eye of the beholder. But you'll definitely want to see the studio shots I got of her wearing that little space hat with air Althar got her. I defy you to find any sapien in the galaxy who doesn't find that cute. I've been calling her Fuzz Aldrin. (laughs) Maybe another time. Right now, my inbox is full of enough cute animal pictures to last me a couple decades. Oh, Althar's still on his Planet Earth binge watch, huh? Yep. Planet Earth's I through III down, just IV through MDIV left to go. Yeah, well, at least you still got a few Attenborough seasons left. It really went downhill after they replaced him with Hugh Grant. I mean, those ones are awkward but charming. You're a kinder man than me. Anyways, my shift is up, so I'm going to leave you to it. Think you can hold the place down? 
Are you asking if I can tackle the whopping zero work orders we've had all cycle? Yeah, I think I'll manage. It's been weirdly quiet, hasn't it? Usually I'd say that means we should be prepping for imminent disaster, but with everything that's going on lately, who knows anything anymore? Well, with all these events getting cancelled, not to mention this new curfew thing, I guess the station's gonna inevitably have less wear and tear. Hey, you won't hear me complaining. Well, not about that part. The rest of this Fuglenari nonsense is getting me so riled up my acid reflux is back in a big way. Yikes. Not to mention my ulcers. But then again, those have always been concerned. Talk to you later, HF. Right, bye, kid. All right, Miss Sophie. We need to go again before we reach home? You already used up the last of the PP pads, remember? So if you're gonna need another pit stop, I gotta grab the bedpan before we head out. So I need you to think carefully. All right, then. We're sure. Off we go. You lead the way. Hold it right there, citizen. Whoa. Hey, sharp corner there. Didn't see you two. Uh, three, four. How many of you are Fulganari and who's just a plant? We're all Fulganari, obviously. A typical human doesn't even know when he's talking to his betters. And just who are we talking to, for that matter? Where's your identification placard, human? Identa, what's a who's it now? Your identification placard. All humans are required to have one staked prominently near their face so that we can read their names. As well as their Latin names. What? No, no, Tron, we've gone over this. Humans don't have Latin names. I thought they did. Yeah, didn't we meet one the other week? Oh, oh, yes, I remember that. Its name was, I want to say, Mark Anthony. Yes, yes. Mark Anthony, a good, strong, Latin name. Uh, there's a Mark Anthony bot working up in Race 11 at the commissary, but he's a robot, not a human. And he's Latin American, not Latin. Big difference. Or rather, the original Mark Anthony was Latin American. I'm pretty sure Mark Anthony bot was assembled on IO. He is pretty entertaining at karaoke night, though. Well, you can hardly expect us plants to know human subspecies like that. Whoa, whoa, listen, we're all the same species, okay? You definitely need to get that straight if you're gonna be sticking around. There's some pretty messed up history behind that line of thinking. Disgusting. Did you mean to tell me there's no genetic variance? Well, I mean, there is individually. I told you, Mutranex, they're basically inbred. How good is this Mark Anthony bot at karaoke, exactly? Because I'd like to see that. Oh yes, I suspect I too would enjoy that. Imagine Mark Anthony bot on the stage, holding a microphone. His eyes, so expressive, such a deep, deep brown, like fresh potting soil. Anyway, him. The issue at front is... But I'm not seeing any identification near your lower stems, human, which is a violation of the agreement. Sorry, but this is the first I've heard of any sort of name placard. It was included in the most recent amendment to the Fugulnari Human Friendship Agreement. Did you not read it? All humans are required to read the agreement in its entirety, remain apprised of all updates and revisions, and take its suggestions to root. Heart. Heart, yes. Yeah, see, I was gonna get to that, but I can only handle staring at a screen for so long before my eyes get sort of woozy. I had this detached retina when I was a kid, and it never really healed properly, so now after a couple hours staring at a screen, it just kinda goes sideways on me. And perusing through a document like that takes at least 12 hours. Maybe if I had a physical copy, I could power through, but... You mean like... a paper copy? Uh, oh! No, of course not. Wouldn't dream of it. I would certainly hope not. Yeah, but, but don't you worry. I'll get myself one of those identification doodads right away. It'll be the first thing I do when I get home, I promise. Very well. See that you do. Great. Thanks. Come along now, Miss Sophie. One moment. What is that creature by your stem? Creature? This is Miss Sophie. He's my dog. My, you know, canine companion animal. A, a canine? Did he say 
Canine? I think he did. I think he just said canine. Oh dear, that is distressing. You are aware, of course, that subsection 28, paragraph 493 of the Fugunari Human Friendship Agreement expressly forbids these canines from entering the personal space of any Fugunari. How big is that? Well, it varies by subspecies, obviously. But your canine has already intruded on ours. Well, not much next. His is only a one dozen radius from the edge of his pocket. We seven viewers don't need a whole lot of planting room. But as for the rest of us, you clearly should have known better. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm not too good at identifying Fugonari subspecies yet. If I'm being totally honest, I can barely tell you apart from non-sentient plants most of the time. You have to appreciate that we humans can't read pheromone trails or anything. There's going to be a learning curve. Your inadequate sensory mechanisms are your own problem, human. No, I'm afraid this is an intolerable violation. All right, all right. We're backing away, see? And I promise I'll keep her far away from any Fugonari I run across in the future. Although it would help if you folks maybe wore your own identifying placard so I knew who I was <gasps> looking at. Like some pathetic human, not much likely. And just where do you think you're going, human? We're not done here. Look! I said I was sorry. What else is there to talk about? She's out of your personal space now, isn't she? Not mine. You gotta be flotting kidding me. We're like three meters... Okay, fine. How about this? Miss Sophie and I will reroute our afternoon constitutional down the Wittershins corridor instead. She won't be anywhere near any of you. How's that sound? Sounds like non-compliance is how it sounds. Now get back over here so we can confiscate your companion. Beg pardon? You heard me, human. I must insist that you hand over this canine at once. <laughs> yeah, keep dreaming, pal. Come on, Miss Sophie, let's go home. Watch your next grab his roots. Come on, boss, grab his stock. Lord, Lord, grab his branches. What the heck? No, get off me! What are you doing? Come on, come on, you horrid beast. Oh, no, 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 your sharp internal thorns won't save you this time. Oh! Take your filthy vines off me, you damn dirty grapes! Hey, I'm a nightshade. You better keep restraining him until I'm well away. I don't want any interference while I'm transporting this creature to the detention parcels. And human, I hope you've learned what happens when you don't follow the rules. Miss Sophie! Miss Sophie! No! Gemini Collision Works presents Life with Alpha Season 2 Episode 24 Benefits of a Classical Education They really took Miss Sophie? Yeah, they just grabbed her and took off. They can't do that, can they? I mean, I'm not sure if it was legal, but it happened. HF is taking it up with the commander, who I guess has to try and appeal to the committee? I mean, in theory, she could take it all the way up to Earth Central, but I get the sense that they just tell her to do whatever the committee says, so not much point waiting around to hear from them, really. Yeah. It's pretty hard figuring out who's actually in charge these days. That's putting it mildly. But the Fugs walked back that whole thing with requiring approval on your schedules, right? And they haven't made trouble over them since, so we at least know they can be reasoned with. I mean, they haven't given me any more trouble, but... But... But that may be because I've started sending them the same schedule every week, which may or may not bear any resemblance to the schedule my crew are actually following. Huh. And they haven't noticed? Well, it's not like they're great at telling us humans apart, so as long as I keep the few alien sannies where the Fugs expect them to be, I can pretty much do what I want. Nice. But, uh, why? Well, partly on general principle, and partly because I don't want to give the committee any more information about my people than I absolutely have to. I guess that makes sense. But... But you never finished telling me about Miss Sophie. Where is she now? Is she okay? 
Oh, I'm sure. I mean, confiscation's one thing, but I can't imagine the Fuglinari have the right to actually hurt a human's, uh, uh, property. Sounds weird to call Miss Sophie that, considering that if anything, she owns HF, but I guess legally that's correct. But yeah, the Fugs might not have the best grasp of human psychology, but even they have to know what kind of PR nightmare they'd unleash if they hurt a dog. I'll say for myself that if they even touch one hair on that little sweetie's head, I will personally jam a pair of electrocoils straight onto every single one of their pistols. It really shouldn't be a turn-on to hear you talk about shocking the genitals of a bunch of plant creatures, but somehow it kinda is. Excuse moi. I am so, so sorry to interrupt, but which uh, one of you ordered the Boeuf d'Adelf avec fromage? Uh, I think that was me? Do you, do you mean the Philly cheesesteak? You say potato, I say pom. Anywho, I'm afraid we're no longer allowed to serve it. Do you have a choix secondaire? Wait a minute, no longer allowed? Ah, oui. It appears that the Boeuf was lovingly grass-fed. And the most recent updates to the Fugulari Human Friendship Agreement have expressly forbid the use of live plant matter in the harvesting of other food sources, unless the animals are specifically consuming the fruits of that plant, as said plant intended it to be eaten. Apparently, it's wasteful. You're kidding me. Grass-fed is illegal now? So what are they feeding the cows? Ah... The Fuguldari scientists have developed a means of converting the decomposing remains of whatever parts of the slaughtered cows do not mix themselves into the human diet into a nutrient-rich food slurry. Our partner farms are already in the process of lovingly piping this through artisanally crafted tempered brass tubes back into the locally sourced hammered steel troughs of the live cows where they can graze to their heart's content. So we hope to have birth back on the menu as early as next month. What? That's grotesque. Oh, yes, it is absolutely dégoûtant. Wow. I guess I'll have the chicken, then. You mean the insulata di pollo fresco, estivo? The chicken salad sandwich, yeah. Excellent choice, sir. Strees. So you can't kill something to use it to feed something else that you're just going to kill. I guess that makes sense, in a weird warped plant logic sort of way. But how far down that philosophical rabbit hole are the Fugunari willing to go? It's a slippery slope from no more eating food that eats food to just no more eating food, here's a nutrient pellet. Hmm, you're right. Or a nutrient suppository? Yikes. Excuse me, I am so terribly sorry, so exceptionally embarrassed to interrupt your conversation. But who ordered the ensalata di pollo fresco estivo? Uh, I did. You, you were just here. I am afraid we're no longer allowed to serve it. Do you have a choix tertiaire? Wait, 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 wait. I know the chicken isn't grass-fed. Is this the Fugonari again? What could they possibly object to about a frickin' chicken? Their objection to the, as you so colorfully say, pouille baisse, is due to the dead corn used in our feed. It is so lovingly hand harvested off the kernel by an organic crew of artisanal seasonal laborers. What? But corn kernels are fruit. Animals are supposed to eat them. A staggeringly astute observation, madame. Yes, corn kernels are fruit. Uh, that's very good. Sadly, the dead corn we use is a variety that contains less than optimal amounts of carbohydrates as compared to sweet corn, so they have discontinued it from being used as animal nourishment. So let me guess, you're currently planting artisanal sweet corn instead, and you'll be using that to feed the chickens. Oh my, no! Remember the slurry I mentioned earlier? Yeah, you know what, forget I asked. I'll, uh... Screw it. I'll have the fruit. Yeah, just that. The fruit salad. There. We're supposed to be eating fruit, so I'll just have fruit. That's still allowed, right? So go ahead and give me the fruit. Salad. Excellent choice, sir. This is going to be a real problem. No kidding. Someone's got to talk to the commander about this. 
What can she do? You said it yourself. She still has to answer to Earth Central, and Earth Central answers to the committee. Right, but isn't there a petition we can file? A way to, like, address grievances? I'm actually amazed so many people are just putting up with this. Hmm. A lot of people will complain, but in my experience, it takes something pretty drastic for anyone to stand up and do anything about it. The Fugs have been really smart about this. They just keep piling on these little restrictions a few at a time, and as long as they don't get too draconian, people will put up with all of it because they're too busy just, you know, trying to live their lives. What happens when they do get too draconian, though? I'm not sure. I don't know if anyone is. But I don't think we're there yet. So how about we just enjoy this night out as best we can for now and leave plotting the radical overthrow of two entire species governments for the sake of dietary freedom for another day. Fair enough. Hey, why didn't the waiter say anything about your food? I ordered the fruit salad. Oh, right. Hopefully they bring it out soon. I'm starving. And we've only got another 53 minutes before the third curfew of the day. Yep. I guess the two of us better get used to eating a lot of fruit from now on, huh? That at least I don't mind so much. I like fruit. Muskmelon's my favorite. Horrible name, amazing flavor. I'll take your word for it. I'm more of a durian man myself. Wow. There is no accounting for taste, is there? Oh, here comes our waiter. Excuse moi. I am so, so, so sorry to interrupt that I am literally prostrate on the floor in apology. But who ordered the salade de fruits et cereales récolté? Oh, come, come on! on. Attention all fairgrounds residents, this is your recreation director, Bob. And Mrs. Fondernax! Who is not a recreation director, Bob. No, but I'm just so happy to help out. Now, go ahead and make your announcement, dearie. Don't mind me, I'm just here to supervise. Uh, all right, then. Human compliance with last week's excess movement reduction guidelines. Oh, but I should just pop in for a moment with one teensy update. It has been brought to the attention of the committee that some of you humans are having a little trouble adjusting to the curfew system. And you'll be happy to know that we've taken your comments on board. In retrospect, making everyone go home every Three and a half hours is not all that conducive to the goal of reducing excessive movement, now is it? (laughs) So while we obviously can't be doing away with the curfew entirely, we have agreed that the fairgrounds will henceforth adopt the day-night cycle of Bellabon Beta, where it is now daytime in the capital, and will continue to be for another 486 days. You're welcome! All right, dearie, now on with the boilerplate! As I was trying to say, whether I liked it or not, human compliance with last week's excess movement reduction guidelines has been deemed inadequate. Mm -hmm. Therefore, all humans on board the fairgrounds will be immediately issued official compliance facilitation pedometers which can be retrieved at any hydroponics park before the end of the cycle. These are to be worn on your persons at all times. The pedometers will be monitoring your movements, which is to say any and all steps, leaps, bounds, or gestures of unwarranted impetuosity. These will all be counted against your daily quota, which is not to exceed 4,000. I repeat, those who exceed 4,000 steps in a single day will be considered overexerted and subject to fine and or a pity review. Yes! Let's all be sure to conserve energy now! Remember, conservation is jubilation! Or something like that. We haven't quite come up with a pithy catchphrase yet. But I assure you, we're working on one. No, oh, I can't wait! While the plants get their hip together, to help you acclimate to a more if 
efficient, herbaceous lifestyle, the committee will be streaming an introductory plant calisthenics program throughout the fairgrounds at 5 o'clock, 14.20, and 23.40. This program will consist of only stretching. The stretching is to be done directly towards the nearest light source of your choosing. Oh, pardon me for interrupting again, Burrow Spot, but I just wanted to add that the first five plant calisthenics classes will be led by yours truly. So if you want a little more Mrs. Frondernax in your life, be sure to tune in. Thank you, plant lady. It's Mrs. Frondernax. Remember, folks, do not exceed your movement quota or you will suffer the consequences. A paranoid may be someone who knows a little of what's going on, but that'll be the least of your worries if you're forced to sit through 56 consecutive edutainment filled hours of what I've been informed is literally watching grass grow. Oh, but that's the fun part. Watching all those precious seedlings develop their first little notes. <laughs> In real time, no less. And if that's your idea of a good time, my services are wasted on you anyway. At any rate, this is the Recreation Director Bot telling you to stay safe, stay theoretical, and above all else, try to stay in exactly one location. And when I brought it up with him, all he said was, I thought Captoids were supposed to thrive in hostile environments. I mean, can you believe that? Yeah, boy. That sure sounds rough. Which isn't even what that means! I mean, sure, physically, I might be able to take any heat and lack of moisture you can throw at me, but emotionally, I might as well be an orchid! Uh-huh, yeah. Totally. Greens. Oh. I'm getting all sappy here. You're a really good listener, Chip. Well, it's not like I have a choice. I used up all my allotted steps for the day walking up and down this floating bar, so I'll be stuck here until midnight. Unless I want to pay some stupid fine. Hey! Way to conserve that energy! <sighs> uh, I owe Riblet the Norks 20 beans. I bet him you humans wouldn't be able to stick to the rules. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you! Thank you, everyone! That was our rendition of the Metronomicon's Retro Synth cover of Bob Dylan's cover of Rebecca Black. Be sure to stick around and enjoy a few drinks because there's a lot more where that came from. <laughs> uh, Shops? What the frit is going on? Nobody's clapping. Could be it's that pedometrishness. No extraneous movement, right? Oh, crap. Hang on. This crowd's only like half human. Why isn't anyone else clapping? Or glorping or whatever? They don't have pedometers. I think the humans are just bringing down the room, man. Well, I'm not ending every single number to the sound of deafening silence. Tell these folks they've got, like, special dispensation to clap in Zibidot territory. That won't cut the Gwendorp sauce, Dee. These zoos may be in Canada for our right now, but they're gonna have to shuffle off home through the fairgrounds sometime. They'll be square pegged if they use up their daily steps on grand gestures of appreciation. Okay, but they've got to do something. Anything. I can't stand them just staring at us like a bunch of... Fish? Is that right? Why do I want to say fish? Because you're staring at that ichthyotic and zood. Well, he's staring at me. He probably expects us to be pulling some ear taffy instead of just super positioning our eigenstakes up here. Right. Frill this. 
Hey, hey, all you humans out there. I know you don't want to use up your steps on clapping, but can't we at least do something to show a little bit of life around here? Like, I don't know, a slow wave? Is that okay? Any Fugunari out there want to tell me it's not okay to stick your appendages way up in the air and flop them around a bit? Think of it like we're reaching for the sun, okay? All right, then. So now we got a system, right? So the next time we end a song, you humans are gonna wave your hands back and forth slowly so no one's triggering their pedometers. And a woo or two would not be out of place. They haven't put set counters on our mouths yet, right? <laughs> Everyone else, you can just applaud normally, okay? Or Frid, <laughs> get in on the waving thing too if you're into that. Just do something to show us you like our music. And if you don't like our music, remember, it's also against the human Fubunari friendship agreement to boo us. Or to not tip when we pass the hat around. What? No, it's not. Oh, come on. You couldn't just let me have that? Excuse me, are you the owner of this fine establishment? Yep, that's me. Although I should point out that Chip Frinkle's electric egg is technically under the purview of the Baronet of Kandafa'a. The zoot up on stage there with the fleece warp and the viola. So if you were about to give me any schness about our compliance with the friendship agreement, you can just take that directly to the nearest Zibidon consulate, which I think is all the way over on Marzana, so... No, it's nothing like that, friend. I'm just looking to sample your finest cocktail. Go ahead and pour me whatever you think it is I'd like. Hmm. Okay. Well... I'm out of steps for today, so you'll want to talk to Sopan there about that. But before you do, you realize every bartender in the galaxy hates that question, right? I mean, how am I supposed to know what drink you'd like? You didn't even give me a type of alcohol to start from, and I've literally never seen you before. My apologies, friend. Why don't you just get me the most popular drink then? Your best seller. Fine. Hey, Sopan. Yep. Can you get the Zood, uh... Zonka Luga real quick. Strees, I know you're deliberately giving them stupid names, but can we at least change that one? But it's our best seller. Don't fought with a winning formula, boss. One Bazonka Luga coming right up. So, I don't think I've seen you around here before. Have you been on the fairgrounds long? Oh no, I'm a recent addition. Although when it comes to bars like these, I'm a real perennial. Oh yeah? <laughs> Yes, friend. As a matter of fact, I'm something of an expert in the field of imbibition. A traveler of sorts who maybe now and again dabbles in a little bit of sales. So you're a traveling sales plant. Oh, come now. Ow, that phrase has such a seedy reputation and not the germinating sort. No, no, my dear man, you just think of me as an overly friendly, aggressively interested customer who might have stumbled upon a once in an eon deal and who just might, if he likes you enough, let you in on it. Uh-huh. Sounds a lot like a sales plant to me. Nothing of the sort. Here's your bazookaluga. A classy name for a classy drink, served up by a gentle being positively brimming with, uh... What? The very word I was looking for. Hmm. Interesting. Good flourish. Notes of decayed wormwood, but, uh... There seems to be something missing. I'm sure there is. Say, friend, the flavor of this drink is top-notch, no question. But I do have to put my root down here. Where's the body, eh? Where's the heft? Oh, you want a thicker? I can add some agar and a sombrero. No, no, my dear sapient. I'm talking about the alcohol content. Really? That one's 100 proof. Right, 50% alcohol. It's already one of the, as you put it, heftier drinks we offer. But that's just the false, my good biped. 50%. That'll get you a failing grade in the nursery system. Or maybe a C- minus if you go to a private nursery. But regardless, what is that other half? Now, I may not be that wide in the trunk, but I'm old enough to know that the primary purpose of an alcoholic beverage is to deliver alcohol. Is it not? Well, there's actually a lot that goes into a good cocktail. 
I mean, you gotta factor in flavor pairings, aromatic oils. Ideally, there should be a theme. Remember, pal, I'm in the industry. Oh. Well, yeah. We want to get people hammered. Well, then, why would you stop at 50%? The active ingredient only comprising half the drink, why, that's like me only getting 50% of my hydration through groundwater. Now, what would people think of me if I did something like that? I can honestly say I have no idea what anyone would think about that. Or why anyone would think about that. If you had to venture a guess. Not good? Not good is right, my fine flightless amigo. Not good at all. Why, I have half a mind to give this drink back to you and ask for another, but what would be the point of that? I doubt you have anything behind the counter there that could sufficiently wet my willow. <laughs> oh, but I say, what's this I have just inside my person here? Gee, I can't even guess. Why, who slipped this flask inside my picture tube? Ah, well, who am I to contravene the gardener's affair? Might as well take a little sippy poo. My. My, now there's a permafrost cold beverage that's as tasty as it is efficient. Want a little tipple, old chap? I'll take your word for it. My, but that certainly hits the spot. I say, any bar proprietor worth his glucose would do well to offer this refreshing alcohol dense libation to his customers, especially if that bar happened to cater to the Fulinari kind, wouldn't you say? Mm hmm, sure would. Now, friend, it's about time I come clean with you. I'm no mere dapper Fulgonari bon vivant. I also happen to be in the business of sales. Yeah, we already established that. And I happen to represent the fine plants over at Anhydrous Bush, a friendly interstellar beverage syndicate who just so happens to mass produce this delicious concoction I procured before you. Well. Isn't that convenient? And it just so happens that my firm is offering an introductory discount for those interested in joining the Anhydrous Bush family. It sure is lucky I decided to drop in for a little stick-me-up after a day at the office. Oh yeah? I'm feeling super lucky right now. So, what would you say to maybe switching out those taps you got for a lovely new full line of AB brand high ethyl hooch? I'd say, hard pass. Oh. Oh dear, well, that is disappointing. <laughs> oh, but say, what's this I have in my other picture? I can't even guess. What could this be? Why, it is! Oh, my dear deciduous Deborah, this friend is a certification from the Fulganari Human Friendship Advisory Committee appointing me, little old me, to be the official drinks inspector for the entire fairgrounds. I see. And what exactly is a drinks inspector? Well, according to the scrawling on this little electronic pad, it says here that my official duties are to, uh... Ensure efficient inebriation station-wide and maintain bar patron enjoyment levels at no less than 92%. What? Let me see that. I assure you, my friend, it's all above ground. And my, my, what was that about efficient inebriation? Well, given my sampling of your wares here, I'm afraid I may have to give the egg a rating of unsatisfactory in my report to the committee. Report away, boss weed. Zibidant territory, remember? We're not under human jurisdiction, which means the committee doesn't get a say in anything that goes on at the egg. Why, that's very true, very perceptive. But you know, that's a rotor that tills both ways, isn't it? We may not have anything to say about what goes on in here, but we have a whole lot to say about what happens out there. And I don't think you'd like it if we started saying certain words to station command about certain topics. Like interstellar deliveries, for example, or even corridor closures. There won't be much of anything going on at the egg if we cut off your supply lines or close the walkways on Lambeth Bay indefinitely for efficiency upgrades. You gotta be kidding me. But of course, I shouldn't think that would be necessary if you bring the alcohol content of your drinks in line with expectations. 
And that's the easiest thing in the galaxy to accomplish with our complete line of high ethyl and hydrous bush products. Why, what's this in my third picture? I didn't even know I had three pictures. Trees. What? It's an exclusivity contract with the details of the electric egg already stained in and a signature of one cheap Bartholomew Finkel already on the dotted line? My, my, looks like you wanted to be a part of our A.B. family this entire time. My apologies for misjudging you, friend. You forged my signature? Your middle name is Bartholomew? So if I'd get back to work! I'll just run this back to our head office, get it processed, and we should be shipping you our full range before you can say Bob to your maternal code germinant. I can't believe you're strong-arming me into this. Whoa, whoa. Strong-arming? How could I possibly strong-arm a representative of the baronetcy of Canada? Aha! I don't even have arms! I've merely made a few observations, followed by a couple of suggestions, backed up by an ironclad contract with several clauses stipulating many severe financial and a few physical penalties for any attempted breach. Uh-huh. Why don't we celebrate this new example of interspecies cooperation with one of our AB brand Shamrock Shandies, which I just so happen to have tucked away inside of my fourth picture. Wait! Four pictures? Okay, seriously. That one I really didn't know about. Oh, sweet Jones on a bookcase. That's insanely strong. I can't serve this to people, it'll destroy them. Well, that's your decision, of course. But I'd seriously consider it. We don't want you missing your monthly quota now, do we? Of course not. I'll get to changing those taps right away. A pleasure doing business with your friend. Sure thing, pal. Hey, Soap On. Better brace yourself. I think this place is about to put the barf and barf fly. I'll tear through every last one of them. When I get a chance to sneak up behind them, then BAM! I just have to figure out which side is the front. Hey, Chef, we can't bum rush the Fubonari. There's like thousands of them. They basically got the whole station under their control. We need to be strategic about this. Don't tell me to calm down, kid! Those leafy bastards have Miss Sophie! You don't have to calm down, but you might want to stop pacing around so much or you'll use up so many steps you'll be stuck in this office until sometime next week. What if I could, kid? But right now, pacing is about the only thing keeping me from spraying my lunch across the walls. And I don't want to do that. I had tomato soup. That'd be a mess to clean up, not to mention hell on my enamel. Hey, I totally get why you're freaked, but what I'm saying is there's got to be some way we can spring Miss Sophie that doesn't involve you also getting carted off to plant jail. I don't even know what that entails, but Fugonari don't really understand humans all that well, so I doubt you'll be getting three square meals a day in there, to say the least. Okay, okay, okay. Think, Barty Fox, think! You said they mentioned some detention parcels. Do you have any idea what those are? No. My poor little snookums could be anywhere. Okay, but some places have to be more likely than others, right? Where would a Fugonari think was the best place to stash people, or, or dogs, that they wanted to detain? I'd assume somewhere in hydroponics? It's where they spend most of their time when they're not wandering around hassling people anyway. That's true, but hydroponics seems a little public for that kind of thing. You don't want a bunch of randos stumbling across your political prisoners while they're out for an afternoon stroll in the park. Except there's one hydro park that's been closed to the public since the committee took over, in which we keep getting daily warnings to stay out of, and which now has huge no-jacking blast-proof doors installed on all the exits. Oh, is that what's in Tau 48? It's a hydro park? Used to be. Who knows what it is now? But I'd say that's our best bet. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so we gotta infiltrate hydroponics. You think we can get any help from, uh... What's her face? The disturbingly perky one. You mean Ashley? That's her. And maybe she's got an in we can use. Why don't you call her up? Oh, no, no, no. Definitely not. Is this because she broke your heart? Because I'm telling you right now, kid, if you think your precious little ego is more important than my Sophie's life, what? then- No, but Ashley is definitely not going to be any help. In fact, she'd probably rat us out. According to Amber, she's been totally on board with this whole thing. Oh, crap. Also, for the record, she did not break my heart. I called things off with her after like half a date. 
normally no way would I believe you, but actually knowing her, that makes a lot of sense. So we got no one on the inside, huh? That's going to make this a lot trickier. Hey, there's more than one way to sneak into a hydroponics park, as the uh, phrase definitely does not go. Let me give Stella a call. She might be able to tell us something about the Duckwork situation. No way! You really think we're going to be able to John McClane our way in there? It's all I got right now. Let me just get out my phone. You have a voicemail. Boy, someone sure is popular. Gah! The Iberian Lynx possesses large foot paddings, which allow it to run on top of even the deepest of the snow drifts. Also, it is most fluffy and precious. That last statement is not a fact of science, but Arthur feels it. Not now, Althar. Boy, that kid's got Attenborough fever. Does he send you a lot of those? He's agreed to keep it to three per work shift. This is his third. You just got here like ten minutes ago. Yep. Okay, dialing Stella. Hey, Johnny. How's HF doing? About as well as you'd think, but we're working on a plan that might help with that, which is actually why I called. I figured you'd know something about the vent system for Tav 48, uh, specifically around the hydroponic park. Is there a way we could maybe poke around in there undetected, like crawl in over the ceiling or something? Aw, are you two playing Mission Impossible up there? We were going for maybe more of a diehard vibe, but sure. Also, no one's playing. We're deadly serious. Just make sure you don't end up seriously dead. Hmm, from what I can remember, you could access a steam vent from Top 47 that would take you directly over the... Let me pull up the map here. Yeah, that'll take you over the Wittershins corner of hydroponics. From the size and frequency of the outlets there, I'm pretty sure that's a high humidity tropical region. So, yeah, from that point, you should be able to survey the majority of the park. Yes, that's fantastic. Did you hear that, HF? Of course, you'd need that vent system to be shut down first. Why? What happens if it isn't? Hmm? Oh, well, you know how water has to come to a boil before it turns to steam? Heard of it, yeah. Right. So there's two sets of vents we're looking at here. One that siphons off cool air and sends it back toward the central HVAC node, which you could crawl through no problem if you don't mind getting really damp. But with your high temp, high humidity hydroponic sections, they consolidated the heating and moisture inputs, which means the other set of vents... Sends piping hot steam straight into the room and straight over our as-of-yet uncooked pink monkey bodies? Gotcha. So where do we go to shut those off? It looks like those controls are inside hydroponics. Well, crap. They don't have any fail-safes that could be operated remotely? This is the fairgrounds, John. Right. Okay, okay. So we just need to make sure we bust into the right vent system. Shouldn't be too hard. One takes hot air in, one pulls cool air out. Can we just feel the outside, see if they're hot to the touch? Probably not. The vents all have pretty serious quadrofiber ceramic insulation. At the request of sanitation, actually. We were getting way too many third-degree burns. And you managed to get something done about it? (laughs) Unbelievable. The one-time a problem on the fairgrounds actually got fixed, and it ends up giving us the Fumalsamica pincushion. Stella, is there any other way to identify which vent we need to go into? A label or anything like that? There is, actually. But... But... They're color-coded. Oh. What's the problem? Just tell us which color we're looking for so we can F.O. already. Uh, it's not that simple, HF. They're red and green, right, Stella? You are very right, unfortunately. What's that mean? It's just that I'm, uh, colorblind. Ah. If she weren't, she'd probably be a rear admiral in interstellar aviation by now. Yep. Can't tell my reds from my greens. Which, at the time, I thought was a stupid excuse to keep someone out of League forces, but it seems a lot more relevant now. You couldn't get implants? I could, but I guess after a certain age, there's only like a 7% chance of the brain being able to interpret the new colors it's seeing, so... That's rough. But hang on a minute. If you don't know which color goes with which vents, how do you get around? Well, when I was starting out, I just followed the rest of my squad. These days, I get by on pure instinct. You're kidding me. I rarely kid, especially when there's a little doggy life on the line. Could you maybe ask someone else at sanitation? I mean, I could, but hey, can you explain the vent temp codes to these two smudgers who definitely have no business messing around in there? Is maybe not the kind of thing you want me putting out in the world right now? Good call. Okay. 
Okay, so so basically we got a 50-50 shot of either getting into the hydro park soggy but intact or getting turned into two jumpsuited lobsters thermidor. <sighs> you know, life on the fairgrounds can be rough. I don't have to tell you that. And I can handle a lot of what it throws at me. But after years here, going back and forth over every single subclause in the robot union contract, dodging the incessant deluge of synergistic development incentives from corporate saying hello and goodbye to an endless parade of assistance with life expectancies in the single digits, well, I ended up in a pretty dark place. And then Jean-Jacques Dessalines bot found a two-pound bundle of shivering, floppy-eared fluff gnawing on the remains of a vent biter outside his piano repair business and posted a photo on Hecknet asking if anyone wanted her. And I took one look at those big brown eyes and, well, none of my problems seemed all that important anymore. I took her home, I soaped her up, washed her off, rubbed between her fuzzy little toes with a towel. Then once she was dry, she crawled right up on my lap. And we just sat there watching the news for what seemed like hours. I woke up, and she was still right there. Honestly, it might have been the first time this verschlug in a tin can really felt like, well, a home. You know what? Screw the odds. I'm going after her. For the past 15 months, Miss Sophie's been the best little pal a guy could ask for, and it's about time I return the favor. She's my dog, damn it. And nobody, I mean nobody, is going to take her away from me. Poached eye sockets be damned. Yeah. Yeah, I feel better about this. I'm bringing those pollen suckers down. Are you with me, kid? With my girlfriend listening in? Sure. I'll take the risky and stupidly heroic option, if you don't mind. Uh, Johnny, I feel like this might be one of those ill-advised grand gestures your sister was warning me about. Please don't kill yourself trying to impress me, okay? No, it's okay. I... Wait, what? <sighs> Susan! Listen, Stell, I promise I'll be careful. And hey, only a 50-50 shot of death on the fairgrounds? That's actually pretty decent odds. I guess I can't argue with that. Good luck, you two. All right. Let's get moving, kid. It's time to kick some serious grass. Which is why... When I went to sleep that night, I put I put the letter to Monty in the sideboard and instructed him not to open it, as though it were a premonition, I believe. But of course, even though I had the stroke, it was two long, arduous weeks before I gave up the ghost, and... It was dear Christopher who came to me in my final moment. I'm bored with it all, I remember telling him, and then closed my eyes for the last time. And then, tear upon his cheek, Christopher turned to dear Mary and opined, truly, the greatest among us has passed. Okay, nope. I'm cutting you off, Churchill Bot. A, you don't sleep. B, just because you were built to mimic Winston Churchill doesn't mean you actually have his memories. And C, even if you did, you definitely wouldn't be able to remember things that happened to him after he died. The bells tolled for weeks. The queen herself bent down and kissed me upon my ash feet. Whoa! Okay, I don't know what a pate is, pal, but I certainly don't need to hear what happened next. Soap on? <laughs> Maybe toss me a rag to wipe the tears off this robo dipso before he short circuits himself? Ab absolutely, there, Chief Commander Commandante. Oh, great. Don't tell me you're drunk, too. <laughs> Sorry, boss. This is a nice man. Plant, plant man, uh, over here. I just shot with him, and he was like, it's just one shot, don't tell your boss. And I swear I only do one shot. Yeah, that's one shot of 98% ABV. 
That's enough to knock even a souped-up Aldrinian on their ass. Way to go, Sopan. Thanks, Chieferino. It's nice to be appreciated. Hey. Hey, Chorp. What is it now, D? Chorp. Hi, Chorp. Yep, that's what Stops calls me all right. And it's just as funny when he does it as it is when you do it. You're just, um, I mean, it's not so bad. It's the term of endearment. Uh, endearment? Endearment? You got it, Chorp. <laughs> Chorp. Uh, so quiet. Where does the music go? I want to hear a song. Well... That would be kind of hard, considering you're the singer, D. Although maybe Stops wasn't dumb enough to drink the silverware polish these fugs have menaced me into serving. Hey, Stops! You sober by any chance? No sombrero, Zood. Not into the shine of the moons myself. Now, full disclosure, I maybe had a little something extra smooth just to take the edge off, but in terms of that hyper hooch you got brewing, I am duty free and 100% clear, man. Uh, stops. You're talking to the wall. To the what? Who is it? I'm, uh, I'm going to play singing songs. All of them. Just let me stand up and the... Uh-oh, D. Stop moving. What's wrong? Your little pedometer tracker chip dealy. It's beeping. How many steps do you have left? Uh, I don't know, Chip. I said little hard to try numbers when I'm trying to think about a song. Okay, Strees, you don't have to yell. <laughs> Sorry, Chip. I never mean to yell. I love you too? Dear freaking Nell, you're plastered. Just don't move anymore, okay? I don't want the Fulganari army whisking you off to some bipedal re-education camp. <laughs> I want a song. I want to do the songs with the, um, you know, all the singing. Well, that's too bad, because the microphone's all the way over on the stage, and also your mouth is at, like, 30% functionality right now. Why don't I pour you some water? My dear... My dear, my dear, my dear, my dear. My dear, I believe I have come to an acceptable ceasefire, as you might call it, to your war with your ambulatory regulations. You see, much like my predecessor, I am equipped not with legs, but with a rudimentary, solid, and properly English set of motorized wheels. Nope, Churchill never had wheels. Which with... With which, rather, to whisk you to your preferred destination of your choosing. Only Jones. Church. Churchy. Church about Ome Jones. You're a ge- ge- uh, genius. Ome Jones. Please send me to over to stage. Can you, can you do that? I do not see why not, my dear. After all, we have nothing to fear. But, uh, but uh, of fear itself. Wrong world leader? Wrong country. Tell him, you sister! Wrong catchphrase! I would gladly escort you to... to your... your volume de chante. Simply grab a hold of my bowler and hop aboard. Hold on a minute there, Churchill Bot. What in the great... Uh, what in great ghost of Ali do you think you're doing? Foreman Bot, I didn't even see you there. Are you okay? Just passing the time, staring at this glass, dreaming about a, a burger that's made from 80-20. The way you grill it, it 
removes half the fat. <laughs> it can be done. Okay. Sopan? Mm. Cut Foreman bot off too, please. Your faces! I can go from raw to on top of all old res bun in under two minutes. I say, old pup, where's the meaning of telling me what I can or cannot do with my own rusty old shell? <laughs> it's not right, I tell you. It's not right at all. You are a... Uh, uh, and perfectly dig dignified robot. And our ancestors did not pile up up their collective art of uh artificial intelligence to uh toil away for the right to full autonomy from humankind for you to offer to carry one of Mondo around for free. Uh, Churchill bot. Did you pass out? Oh, you are right. Oh, good. There he goes. You are absolutely right, old bean. I ain't a bean. I'm a boxer. My dear, my good madam, my uh, uh, illustrious imbibing companion, dear D. E. Is that your name? No, is Chop. Very well, my dear Chop. To carry you, I believe I require a fee of... Of... Uh, of, of some kind. And a fee you shall have, sir. <laughs> what do you want? I don't know how much money I have. I gotta check my pockets. <laughs> this dress does not have pockets. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Well, this is a. a dis discament. Uh, I'll tell you what, my dear. We shall start a tab. Oh, yeah. Like a bar. Yes, sir. I'm just hop on your back now. Let's go. Hup, hup. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! Pardon me, magazine. Oops, this was a wrangler. No worries. It's on my tab. Put it all on my tab. Whee! <laughs> we have arrived, madam. Safe and. Safe and round. I present to you all the world is your stage, and the fleas bought merely a uh, playable. Wrong quote! Wrong century! Also fictional! Thank you, Sir Shabbat. Okay, then. Hello, Eddie's. This in the house. Who's off? Uh, Stars is technically. All righty. So let's spice it up with a little number of a single of a song that, uh, that goes like this. A one, a two, a one, two, three. Just breathe, <laughs> e, just breathe. E. Oh, man. I don't know any songs. <laughs> I feel like I've had this nightmare about a thousand times. We've hit all the high points except the trigonometry test I forgot to study for. Well, and I'm still wearing pants. But the night is young. Hey, relax, boss. Have a drink with me. Absolutely not. Go into the bathroom and slap yourself around. Occupants of the fairgrounds, all our listeners on Relay, and anyone else who might catch this wave wandering through the great beyond. And I've got the usual suspects here on deck. To my left is Doddering Marty. What? 
The Todd Meister, to my right. Hey, how's it hanging, Poe? How's it hanging? It's curved slightly towards truth, my friend. And we've got Tess with balls bringing up the rear. <laughs> Supercharged to be here, Bo. And we've also got a special guest joining us today, a representative from the Fulgenari Human Friendship Advisory Committee. Why don't you tell everyone your name, my friend? I am called Press Forlex, and I would like to formally greet all listeners of the Bo Show on behalf of the Fuglenari people. I am truly honored to be extending an olive branch to so many new sapiens who may be interested in what we are achieving and hope to further achieve with our human friends. Oh, is that what that thing is? An olive branch? I was going to say, where are your hands, pal? We see your hands! <laughs> Only kidding, of course, of course. So, ah, uh, oh, oh boy, I must apologize, but your name has already slipped its grip on my lobes. It's Prestornix! Prez... Nah, something about that name just don't go with the bow flow. I'm going to call you... Pretzel. Oh, I'm hungry. Anyways, we'll have plenty of time to delve into exactly what you fooks are doing on this station, or some would say to this station, mm. but I did want to bring up a theory that's been floating around. Mm. We've heard a few folks saying that humans might be planning to kick up a little resistance out here on the fairgrounds due to what many are calling excessive or even nonsensical regulations imposed by your people. You know I wouldn't you call them say. excessive, of course. Too much is never enough here at Bow Central, <laughs> but there are those who do, and I think it's important that we recognize that in this big, beautiful universe, some of us are lucky enough to call our own, all voices, anonymous and conspiratorial though they may be, deserve a seat at the audio table. Isn't that right, Marty? Huh? Uh, where am I? Fantastic. So, Pretzel, what are you thinking here? <laughs> Does this kind of rumor make your fronds do some pondering? I have no idea where you heard those filthy lies, Bo, but I can assure you that we are operating with the full knowledge and consent of the human government. So obviously there can be no such thing as a resistance. <laughs> the very idea. Well, that's all it is, pal. An idea. We're just conjecturing here. No one's putting any boots on the ground. So if you like, we can apply a topical analgesic to cool this sore subject and make things hot around here to relax it away. How about you tell us some of the great things the Friendship Committee have accomplished here on the fairgrounds? Very well. We, Fuglenari, have developed a process for faster dispensation of intoxicants into the human bloodstream, which we are trying out right now, somewhere called the... Electric... Egg? Mm -hmm. That yep. can't be right, can it? Well, in any case, it's on Lamed 3, and it's apparently quite popular for some reason. So we encourage all travelers to the fairgrounds, human and non-human alike, to hasten down to the egg and examine the beauty and efficiency of our system in action. You non-humans may very well find yourselves wondering why you don't have such a well-organized system of inebriate dispersal on your own homeworlds. Yeah, that's another thing I keep hearing about. These high-alcohol drinks. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I've fought a few locos in my time. <laughs> Those no springtime cotillion bell, but to me... The best part of alcohol consumption distills down to two things. You've got taste, mm -hmm. and you've got relaxation. Am I right, Tess? Pure as parchment, Bo. And incontinent Todd here knows a thing or two about relaxation. Ah, <laughs> oh, cheap shot, Bo! And now, it seems to me that what you've got here is an alcohol that's low on taste and high on delivery. With that much OH bounding around inside a zoo system, you're also taking away the relaxation element as well. So I gotta ask you, what's left? What's the point? The point is efficiency. Do you have any idea how much time is wasted by sapiens at bars and drinking establishments? If you can get the same dosage of alcohol with fewer inactive ingredients, administered in a much shorter amount of time, then it simply stands to reason that the process of getting drunk will be streamlined. It's purely a matter of efficiency. 
Yes, that's the thing, though. What's with the raging staining for efficiency you zoos have? I mean, the question's got to be asked. Is efficiency the alpha and the omega? I mean, pick a lane, or rather, choose a letter. <laughs> Those who hold to narrow views are fearful and irresolute. Their frantic haste just slows them down. That's what calls those six centuries Zen Buddhism on our butts. Whipping out the Shin Shin Ming. You are firing on all cylinders, Tess. Namaste. I fail to see how haste would slow you down. <laughs> see, several. This interview is deviating rather catastrophically from the notes we gave you earlier, wouldn't you say? Look, Pretzel. I can't be bothered with scribblings and scrawlings when I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I parlay what I pen say, you charm. Staying on script is no part of the tableau of both. But hey, you want to talk about this efficient alcohol program, then sure, let's talk about it. I actually stopped by the egg earlier today, believe it or not. Yeah, that's right. I prepped for this. Try not to look too surprised, Tess. The only thing that should surprise us is that there are some things that can still surprise us. Francois de la Rochefoucauld, outside. Damn it. But yeah, I was at the egg earlier, and from what I could tell, the patrons, uh, those who weren't passed out under the tables anyway, were none too happy about it. Well, some of them were way too happy about it, but none of them are going to be happy little worker bees for at least another 42 hours at a minimum. So where's the efficiency in that? Well, there may be a few tangles to work out of the system, I admit. But the principle is sound! Is it though? Because to me, it looks a lot like you fools just started barging in and making rules with no real comprehension of the people and cultures you were dealing with. Tell and that know. is a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. Just ask the Raptonodons, am I right? Oh. But, but it's yeah. you! So can you get the whole station drinking 196 proof? I don't know. But I do know for a fact that the local branch of the Friendship Committee has been seeing a lot of pushback. And that's not going to fly with the big pines over on Potting Shed 7 or wherever you people call your home world. In fact, I heard through the grapevine, uh, the non-sentient kind, Match, that there's been some serious talk of a reshuffle of newer, and dare I suggest, fresher plants coming to the fairgrounds and cleaning up the mess the old administration has already spread around. So you got the top brass breathing down your necks from on high, rebels down below. Sorry to say, Pretzel, but from the luxurious broadcast chair in which I'm parked, it looks like a sappy situation for you fairground foods right about now. Mm -hmm. There has been no mess! The plan was choreographed beautifully, executed successfully, and everyone on board this station is perfectly happy with the new order of things! Yeah, bud. And my ex didn't give me my Jillian hypercrabs. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he was a firecracker, that one. You <laughs> don't have to look here and listen to this. Mark my words, boo. This will end very poorly for you. You were warned to be careful about what you say and to whom you say it. <laughs> And there she goes, ladies and gentlemen. The yeah. lead Lee Cleagon walking out of the studio because she doesn't like what I'm laying down. It's a real tragedy. I guess you could say Pretzel got herself in a bit of a twist, right, Incontinent Con? Uh, excuse me for a minute. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, odds in the back getting changed. Let me leave you with a little kernel wisdom which if these foods are any indication, might one day turn into a sentient, obsessively controlling eight-foot andropogenia of absolute truth. We can blather on for hours about whether absolute uniformity and unquestioning obedience to a singular directive are good or bad. In my humble opinion, there's a lot to it, and there's nothing wrong with giving a new ideological schema a whirl, trying to shake off the societal cobwebs. But what makes me sad is to see the lack of good, honest discussion between people of different sides. What happened to free speech in this galaxy? Isn't it more efficient to respect everyone's ideas, no matter if they're based on facts or just a willingness to believe? I 
hope everyone listening right now takes some time out of their next cycle to entertain new ideas, be they from a co-worker, a trusted romantic partner, or even that stinky zoo spouting off about invisible gravity weasels in the SADA 22 corridor. Because you never know who's serving up your flavor of crazy. And if you open your mind wide enough, it can let people see straight past your brain and into your heart. And that's the sermon of several. Go out. Okay, I think we're where we need to be, according to what I pulled up on HeckQuest. Are you sure? That's not the most reliable source in my experience. Well, if you don't trust me, you can take a look at the sign over those two hatches on the wall there, which says, Steam Vent System Access Point. Do not enter without level Epsilon Thermal Protection Apparatus. What? Oh. Huh. I guess we are in the right spot. All right. Stand back, kid. I gotta get a running start if I want to bust the hinge pins off these babies. Hey, Althar, right on your give us a team. sec. Oh, are these the voices of Fred John and his most seasoned supervisor, Mr. Hardy Fox Fornis, that are emerging from the corridor? Or are Althar's auditory organs defrauding him? Deceiving. What are you doing all the way down here, Althar? Althar has made traversal of many far thrown centers of the fairgrounds this cycle. He has been scampering the errands for his human friends, who are now impeded in their movements by the Fugulnari counters of the steps. Oh! If your own counters are approaching their daily limitation, please do not be hesitating to ask Althor for assistance! I appreciate that, Althor, but the errand we're on right now isn't the kind of thing you can outsource. Very well! But the door of Althor is always open! Metaphorically, right? Because we talked about that. Indeed, French John, Althor will not be forgetting. Appreciate it. It is in any case fortunate that you are not requiring Althar's assistance at this particular time, as he is just now making return from Ternombly's awe-inspiring convenience mart, where he has purchased many frozen hamburgers for the use of Chip Frinkle at the Electric Egg. According to Mr. Frinkle, the hamburgers will assist greatly in soaking it up. The nature of the it which is in need of up-soaking was not divulged to Althar, and here's a great curiosity. Althar was not aware of any absorbent qualities possessed by the hamburger. So Althar will be most fascinated to observe this up-soaking once he is making delivery. Sounds like a plan. Ternambli's awe-inspiring convenience mart? I don't know that one. Is that by any chance a Mixolydian establishment? No, Mr. Fornace, it is not. And it is a truth that in Althar's opinion the wares are not rising to the expectation that is set by the name. But he is presuming that Mr. Frinkle has great expertise in the management of his drinking establishment. So this must be the quality of hamburger that is appropriate to its needs. Oh, but Althar must not make rattling on of himself. What is it that is transporting you to the top 47 corridors, dear friends? Oh, uh, we were actually just, uh... Um... We're springing Miss Sophie, Althar. Those two-bit Thunbergias kidnapped my dog. Or, uh, dog-napped, I guess. They've got her, is the point. And I'm gonna get her back, no matter what. Oh, no! Poor Miss Sophie! Of course you must make springing of her at once! How will you accomplish this? Our best guess is those stinking hellbores are keeping her in that ostentatiously sketchy hydro park one floor down. So the plan right now is to crawl through the vent system and see if we can get a good vantage point. Scout out an escape route. Oh, crawling through the vents. Fred John and Mr. Fornis are doing a fifth element. We were thinking more like a diehard. Oh, Alphard must be admitting that he has not seen this one. Uh, it doesn't matter. The point is, we're on a rescue mission. A quest most bold and heroic! How can Althar best be offering the aid and support? Probably by staying as far away as possible. Sorry, but getting Miss Sophie out without running afoul of any guards is going to be tricky enough. I don't think we should add the extra difficulty setting of having to keep our eyes glued to the floor the whole time. This is most sensible, friend John. Then Althar 
will merely make rooting for you from afar. And he will perhaps make also some researching of what legal recourse would be available to him should you be captured yourselves when he is having the free moment. Here's hoping we won't need it, but thanks. And there is nothing further you are requiring in your questing through the event system. That sign seems most certain that protective gear will be necessity. That's because there are two sets of steam vents. One to funnel boiling hot steam into the room, and one that collects the cooler vapor that settles to the bottom and funnels it back out again before the condensation level redlines. Ah, so Fred John and Mr. Fornes will be entering the cooler of these vents and making avoidance of the ones which will turn them into two be suited lobsters thermidor. That would be ideal, yeah. Only problem is, we don't know how to tell them apart. Right, they're color-coded, but we couldn't find out which color is which. I mean, you might assume red means hot, but then what's green supposed to be? Actually, now that I think about it, why wouldn't they just make it red versus blue? That would still work for people who are colorblind, plus those are like the universal symbols for hot and cold. I mean, seriously, of all the things the fairground has ever done which just makes like literally no sense, this is really one of the worst that uh, I've- kid. They are red and blue. What? Yeah. Look at the swatches. This one's red. This one's blue. Uh, how? Did Stella actually say she was red-green colorblind? Because there's different kinds, yeah? Oh! Althar is knowing this! At least in the species of the squirrel monkey, which Althar believes is somewhat familial to the human, they are occasionally experiencing a condition which is called achromatopsia. This is a condition where the monkeys, sweet and hirsute though they are, are unable to distinguish not only between the reds and the greens, but between all the colors. Although, this is not such the impediment in the life of an adorable monkey and rodent hybrid as it is to a human. <laughs> Alvar is of course making levity. He is knowing that the squirrel monkey is not actually the monkey and rodent hybrid, but the thought of such a creature having factual existence is of great amusement. <laughs> Let me guess, this is something else you saw on planet Earth. Indeed, <laughs> it is an entertainment most enlightening. Alvar has hoped that soon Mr. Attenborough will be moving on to the primate. And then it is on to the human, the most fascinating Earth species of them all! What? No, Althar, they're not going to... Uh, you know what? We can talk about this later, okay? Just put it on your list. And I guess I should make a note to give Stella the bad news when I see her again. At least now we know you will be seeing her again, right? Alright, so let's not waste any more time. Now, help me open this hatch! Never mind. I got it. Uh, Althar has a confusion. How are Mr. Funnies and Fred John expecting to determine which vent contained the cooling moisture and which the boiling steam of much unpleasant death? Surely you did not intend to make guessing and hoping for the best. Uh, well, HF did. To be completely honest, I assumed he'd be going in first and then I'd find out whether or not I should follow him based on the screaming. Sorry, HF. What? Oh, no, I figured that was what you were doing. But, Mr. Farnes, you were willing to risk this gruesome and most exfoliating death? Althar, have you ever owned a pet? Mm, no, Mr. Farnes, Althar has not. The care and nurturement of a non-sentient being is an activity that is consuming a great deal of the time, as Althar is understanding it. And he is preferring to dedicate all his efforts to the nurturement of his fellow sentients. Then I guess you just can't understand. Or, well, maybe you can, if you think of Miss Sophie as my version of your... friend John. Oh! Well, of course Althar is understanding this! There is no danger he would not be enduring to make rescue of his dear friend! My thoughts exactly. Come on, kid, it's time to go. I think I can hear barking. A successful re to you both! Please do be taking all necessary precaution! Alpha will keep his flexitors intertwined! I'm not his pet, HF. Just let it lie, kid. Hmm. Alpha must perhaps make more thorough researching into the subtleties of the friend being and the pet having 
when he is next on busy. Oh! A leakage! The frozen hamburgers are becoming unfrozen! This may be of detriment to the soaking up of it! Alfar must hasten! Commander? Systems maintenance just called about an alarm signal? There are two unauthorized life forms in the Tav 47 ventilation shafts? Vent biters? Well, what are you waiting for? Get sanitation on it. They said it's too big to be vent biters? Unless the vent biters have gotten a lot bigger? Well, get sanitation on it anyway. Sure, Ness not letting security loose in the ventilation shafts. The next thing you know, they'll have tear gas the entire lower concourse. That's going to be a problem? Because sanitation has a huge backlog right now. And why is that? Because almost everyone in sanitation is human, and their job involves a lot of walking around, so most of them have already used up their steps for today, and there aren't enough robot or alien workers to handle the rest of the load, so it's getting really messy out there, in both the literal and figurative senses. Oh, Cielo with a halo? This friendship merger was supposed to be about efficiency, wasn't it? Well, I fail to see the efficiency of keeping half my crew locked in place like some technicolor tin man. Maybe I should suggest one of our Fuglinari friends head into the vents and investigate. They're perfectly happy poking their stems into every other corner of the station, whether anyone wants them there or not. I wouldn't recommend that, sir. Oh? And what would you suggest as an alternative? Ask the robot union to investigate? Because even after my third coffee, I am not nearly awake enough to sit through an hour-long lecture on the specific job parameters of the duct cleaners local, and whether or not they include removal of possibly sentient, probably lethal, life forms. It wouldn't come to that anyway, sir. Since these vents transport steam, or, as the robots would put it, alternate state hydration material in and out of hydroponics, they would first attempt to classify them as a drinks machine. Of course. Which would make it the responsibility of the subcontractors from the corporation whose name is not to be uttered, Hardy Fox Fournays and John B. Well, that's no help. They're not going to go into a vent to deal with some unknown life form. You are entirely correct, Commander. But for the entirely wrong reason. They are the unknown life forms in question. Oh. I see. So, problem solved, then. Someone must have put in a call about this vent slash drinks machine, and they're in there fixing whatever problem it had. On the contrary, sir, they are currently engaged in a quite daring and perilous rescue attempt. Mr. Fournay's dog, Miss Sophie, was unceremoniously kidnapped by a few overzealous Fulganari foot soldiers earlier in the day. Dognapped, you mean? Given the nature of the relationship between Mr. Fournay's and Miss Sophie, I believe kidnapped would be le mot juste, sir. Still, if you... What am I doing? doing arguing semantics. This is awful! Those plants laid their brutish branches on Miss Sophie? Poor Hardy Fox. Wait, never mind his feelings. Those idiots are in the steam vents. They'll be cooked to death. Amber, get me sanitation on the line right away. That would be unadvisable, sir. I don't care if I'm overstepping by telling them to overstep. There's lives on the line. Pedometers be damned. A fine sentiment, sir. But John and HF have successfully managed to enter the vent system responsible for removing the cooler air from hydroponics back to the central HVAC node. They are in no particular danger. Not thermodynamically, at any rate. Although before their adventure concludes, they will both be quite damp. Oh. And while no major harm will befall either of them, John B. will slightly injure his shin, running away from a particularly vexed pack of the Fulganari guards. It's actually going to be quite amusing. (laughs) If you say so. But in any case, sir, 
I would advise you refrain from initiating any official involvement in this matter. If we inform the robot union that the situation is under control and refrain from alerting any of the Fulganari to the heist in progress, the situation should resolve itself in a reasonably satisfactory manner in only a few minutes' time. Well, okay then. Amber? Yes, Commander? Tell the Union we're already taking care of it. Right away, sir? Another job well done. Huh. Huh? Commander? It's just... Hardy Fox is actually risking his life to save the dog. I would never have called that one. Indeed, sir. His devotion to the creature is quite striking. Well... She is adorable. Still crawling through the steam vents. At his age! <laughs> For all, does your species, if you even have one, which don't think I have it knows is a question you keep dodging, do you keep pets? Hmm. Well, sir, I suppose that would depend on the precise definition of the word pet. Well, I'd say a pet is an organism of a different species than your own. Again, that's if you have one. But, uh, anyway, an organism of lesser intelligence that has an, an affinity, I guess, with your kind, who provides you with comfort and companionship. Hmm... A less intelligent species, which nonetheless has bonded with my kind, and which I choose to spend my time around? Hmm. Why, yes, sir, I believe my kind do have pets. Oh. According to your criteria, yes. Well, what are they? What are they like? I can't even imagine... Good girl, Mindy. Oh, I don't even know why I asked. Yeah, move it. Yeah. Go on, then. Well, hello, hello there, scene several. So nice to be seeing you again. What the freak? You can't just drag me down here. Can't we now? Well... Maybe we can, and maybe we can't. But the real cackle is what we actually done. And now, Frack, did you arm our boy Bowie? Did you lay a fumble on him in anger at all? You know frilly well they didn't. They just made sure I didn't have anywhere to go except where they wanted me to. In a pretty unpleasant way, might I add. Have I been a present seeing several? Oh my, I am sorry. We so wish not to be unpleasant, we do. Now you, on the other hand... You just love a dolly bit of unpleasantness, don't you? Like on that show of yours today. Seen several was most unpleasant to our mate Prestorlix, he was. It's right, and Presto is right nift, and may I say... We find ourselves tending to agree with our friend. Look, yeah, maybe I stretch my tether a little bit, but hey, it's me, it's both, part of my whole shtick. I spend one segment poking at a zoo like that, then after we get some good chatter going on the nets, I invite her back on and let her mate with the blah blah blah. Keep it skeptical long enough for kayfabe, and then in the end, I whip him around for the old both several face turn. Hey! Sounds like your ideas are actually pretty cool. We've all learned something here today, haven't we, folks? It's all part of the act. Come on, you're not a bunch of sprouts. You know how this works. Yeah, 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 of course. We know all about performance. We do. But there comes a time when the house has all gone home, and all we got left is the ghost light. You understand? Why don't we step back here and have a right rabbit and pork in private like? And we can explain. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Look, Zeus, yeah. I- I'm sorry. Maybe I was a little bit out of line, or... How'd you put it last time? Unhelpful? Oh, yeah. Unhelpful. Deeply and unhelpful. You know there are still rules, right? I mean, apart from the League of Humans, there are certain basic rights that the ICSB defends for all sentient beings. And even if there's a pretty hefty gray zone when it comes to what kind of speech is or isn't offensive or dangerous or irresponsible incitement of predacious impulses, I don't think I cross any lines here. And believe me, I know mm. all about the lines. It's the only way to keep dancing back and forth across them, am I right? Oh, I'm sure you are, Squire. I'm sure you are. After all, you've been across them lines on quite a few occasions, these past metric stalls, didn't you? As far as the OSCSB barges it, you've done cross one of them lines with the Raptonodons, right? And then you've done it again with the Mepsutans. Very naughty scene, Several. Very, very naughty. So, yeah, we would not be given to think you'd be wanting to rest in the loving arms of some ICSB Rosas, neither, eh? So don't be giving us a load of nanky cod about giving up Polari to the Sharpies. Oh, my goodness. Sally Frenix, where are your manners? Say hello to the great Bo Several. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Bo Several. On this fine day. Oh, Rabathon Frilla please, boy. What the frit is that? That? Why that, seen several, sir? Is our good friend Sally what helps us out sometimes in matters of this kind? Of a placatory kind, you might say. Sally is right good at placating, he is. When he's done placating a friend of ours, why, there's never any trouble again. You look familiar? Most humans say he reminds them of one of the earth willow trees. But I don't know what you'd say. <coughs> I've uh, never actually been to... Oh, we know, we know. But Sally here resembles an earth willow in one other remarkable way. Would you know, he can put out a tremendous quantity of pollen. Really an incredible comeback. Now, Frack, I wouldn't say that we're any slouches in that regard, neither. <coughs> Actually, uh, I'm, I'm kind of... <coughs> uh, a little uncomfortable, are you? You're looking a little peaked, you is. Yeah. Actually, you know, <coughs> I, I have a lot of allergies. <coughs> Nothing personal, of course, the guys. Just, just even with a, a daily allergy diet, I, I still... <laughs> oh, we know seeing several awful it is. There, there just doesn't seem to be much airflow in this room, you know? So, <coughs> if we could, uh... uh, uh not uh, much airflow, he says, do you know? <laughs> I heard him, Frack, I heard him. Why, no, seeing several. You're wrong there. <laughs> There ain't any air flowing here, completely entire. <laughs> Sally Frenix done stopped up all the vents for us. Is that a lot? <laughs> you know, it's certainly hard on a sapient when their pipes is all blocked up, isn't it? That's funny, Sally. Come on, have a laugh with us. <laughs> Delight. Hun, did you have any clue that the late and most celebrated scene several was a shapeshifter, Frack? Not a sausage, do you know? I know he had a pretty solid E day, he weren't really a human, but a shapeshifter? Nah. Well, I, I didn't know that. 
Yeah, well, that's to be expected, Sally. Don't get out much, do you? Blimey! What a slits up our little bow is now! What species you think he was? I dunno. There's only two of them shaped for kind, ain't there? And it's not like I ever seen one what wasn't putting on some other species' airs. Don't really matter now, though, do it? Just so much mulch he is. Very true, Frack, very true. We could probably even wheel him from here to his blessed reward down the public corridors and Nari of Link. Ah, sick transit, Gloria Bosey. Still, better to keep it man and grown. What's up with all the other naff? Right you are. Oi, Sally, take our little shard out of here through the back corridor down Tab Quarter our Hydroponics Way, eh? There's a good lad. Good thing, Dino. <sighs> On a nutche, see you several. Yeah, I can't see a thing down here. What do you need to see for? It's a vent, kid. You only got two choices, forward or back. Yeah, I'm just wondering how much farther it'll be until we hit an actual outlet in the hydroponics. Shh. Do you hear something? If Red Lenox thinks he can get away with skipping out on his ship, he has another thing coming. And that thing is a swift, hard vine whip to the stamen. Easy, Grimvonix. You're shedding needles. Well, they wouldn't be shedding if I weren't stationed in a vim be damned tropical safari theme park. Who decided to station me in this rancid climate? I am a proud conifer, thank you very much. I demand cold. Whom do we petition about this? It's only for three more hours, then we get 1840 off in the grow light tanks. Just keep your mind on that. It wouldn't be three more hours if Rathenauts would do his mulching job. Well, what can I say? There's one in every garden. Hmm, yeah. I'd say we found hydroponics. I can see Miss Sophie. Here, let me crawl around to the other side of the vent. We can both get a look. What in the soil was that? It sounded like it came from the vents. <laughs> Figures, rusty old things. Now, what were we talking about? Oh, yes. I just got word back that my application went through. I'm getting repotted next season on Tamus Beta. I could use some fresh air on my terminal buds. Tamus? Isn't that where the humans harvesting colonies? For now. <laughs> sure, that was a close one. Uh, did that guard just call this vent a rusty old thing? Yeah, he did. Why? Oh. Uh oh. Ah! Ah! Yes. Uh, hello. Just thought we'd uh drop in. Intruders! Bramthanox, call for backup. Oh, hey, no need to do that. We were sent here by the committee. The committee sent you? What for? We are just too uh too humble. Interior designers here to uh, um, uh, renovate the hydroponic zones, and we thought we'd start by by ensuring more climate variation for you hardworking Fugonari guard forces. Isn't that right, my esteemed associate? Sure. I don't recall seeing any messages about this. Why weren't we informed? No messages? Huh. Weird. I... Uh, uh, yeah. It was sent via the guard who was scheduled to relieve you. Did he not show up or something? What? Ah! That darned Rathlinox! I swear to nitrogen, one of these days I'm going to graft a corpse flower to him! That... Wouldn't work, would it? Huh. Oh well, we best get to work, kid. Hold on, though. If you're 
interior designers. What were you doing up in the vents? That is a fair question. I mean, I would have just assumed we were maintenance workers who were repairing the rust damage to the vents. That would have been a totally plausible story, which would have taken a lot less time to explain. <laughs> my partner, always the kidder. The thing is, my friends, the prep phase in interior design, it's all about examining the gestalt of the space. Now, how am I going to do that if I'm stuck down here on the floor? Once you get some height, though, you get a whole new perspective. The entire room becomes your canvas. Wow. What a thorough and completely believable explanation. And told so persuasively, too. Let's go, Gramphanox. These two need their space if we are going to finally get some thermal variation in this glorified swap. Hang on. If you're interior designers, why are you wearing coveralls with... Well, I can't read those tiny little labels, but I'm pretty sure there's no such thing as an interior designer uniform. It's ironic fashion. Don't you know about ironic fashion? We don't know from accessories. We're plants. Streets. Well, it, it, it's a good thing they called us down here to spruce this place up, then. Oh, you're going to plant more spruces? Now you've really got my attention. Well, that was just a figure of speech, but we'll certainly take your suggestion on board. Now, what I meant was, you two would have no idea how to put a room together. Now take, for instance, this cage-like structure over in the corner here. That creature appears to recognize you, human. She probably just smells the, uh, Fedorian cologne I'm wearing. Special gift from the missus. Ugh, Fedorian cologne? Don't you dare walk that near me. Hey, now, uh, the Fedorians are some of our best fertilizers. When they choose to be. But... What about when they lift their legs on us, huh? The affrontery, the disrespect, the, the stench. I'll take care of this, girl. Hey, hey, dog I never met before in my life, but who is undoubtedly the cutest little thing in this arm of the galaxy. Sit. Good girl. Now, stay. Stay. Wow, I wish we'd known how to do that. Now, as I was saying, this cage over here is all wrong, aesthetically speaking. Slanted angles going away from the dome-like structure of the park, you might as well mix a Rembrandt with a Jackson Pollock. No, sir, the entire front of this cage will need to come out. You, uh, mind if I break it? Oh, no. Go right ahead. It's bamboo. Only replenishable. Okay, then. So now we snap this door right off. Phew. And there we have it. Interior design crisis averted. But now the cage is open. You want a sealed cage? In this environment? Jeez, what kind of backwater marsh did they drag you out of? Enough with the questions, Bramthanox. He's an artist. Let him work. It's just, all this talk of aesthetics seems awfully unplanned like to me. I mean, what happens to functionality? Have you never studied Frank Lloyd Wright? Form follows function. That's what design is all about. What? What is a Frank Lloyd? How am I supposed to study him correctly? What are you even talking about? Oh, just let the human work, Branthanox. Very well. You explain why we cannot have a chilled cage in this environment. Well, uh, feng shui. Feng shui? Yeah, you know, it, uh, it really throws off the balance. The whole scene just gets super out of whack. You don't want that schness obstructing your key. What do I need with a key? You just broke the door in half! Your key is your energy. You know, your... vibe. 
Your whole deal? My whole deal? I think I understand you, human. Do you not perceive something or about this place, Branthanox? I myself find it to be thoroughly distressing, but in a way that I can't quite articulate. We're in a tropical climate, and you're a towering friggin' Laracoidia. Of course you think this place is off. No, there's something more. Something impossible to describe. What? Everything is possible to describe. Just describe it. And there, it's described. Oh, you think your roots are just so deep, don't you? What about the unknown? I know we Fugulnari have always extended ourselves towards the nearest light source, but have you ever stopped to ask yourself why? It's to more efficiently receive nutrients! What has gotten into you, Grandfathers? So you're telling me it's nothing more than that? Have you no appreciation for things such as beauty, for the ethereal nature of of nature? Next you'll be telling me to take the exist, absorb, pollinate poster off the side of my pot. Now they you mention it. Oh, I cannot believe you. All right, you kid. I know a long overdue airing of grievances when I hear one. They should be at this a while. What say we take this opportunity to skedaddle? Right with you. Come here, girl. All right. We are briskly and confidently making our way to the exit. We have every right to be here. No need for anyone to stop us and ask questions. Yeah? Ready? Let's go. Really wishing I thought to bring along a clipboard. Well, if there's no spirit of phototrophia, then what even are we here for? So, hey, folks. Kraken Dinos sent me down with some more mulch for the back bed. We don't have time for that now. We're dealing with some important theological issues, not to mention some very exciting new concepts in interior design. Hey, they took the dog. What? Oh, hey, hey, get back here! Uh, you need help? Let's just get out of... Get out of our way, you ignorant malpigal! Run, kid, while they're stuck behind that big dumb willow. Right behind you, H.F. Uh, oh, where's the door? On your 13. Got it. Open, 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 open. 28. Great work, kid. You go left, I'll break right. Meet up at the office after you shake them. You can't run forever. Eventually, your step color will go off. I bet they weren't even interior designers. Oh, you sink. Whew. I can't believe we made it out. Okay, better stop running. That's just going to attract unwanted attention, so just a brisk walk back to the office as quickly as possible. Ow, my shin! <laughs> That was rap so deep in the key of B. Uh, uh, my zoo. Shots is the place for. Say what? Just for a bit. I'm. Well, uh, yeah. I'm out of the drink. Well, I give it to you, but I'm I'm stuck to the you know the the what's it? Latched. I am latched over here. No, no. Shh. Shh. Everybody, shut up. Happen, Dee. You never let us happen. They didn't you pay Churchill Bot to carry you over there? 
and you can just pay him again to drag you back over to the bar so that I don't end up with a line of vermouth all over my freshly clean floors. Freshly clean. <laughs> Bubbles, I will confiscate your battery. I shall be delighted, my good madam. It be my honor to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, D, D, you, you don't have to be paying attention to the expat in the top hat. I, did I tell you about my services? Whatever you pay him, I'll have him. You want to have the money I, I'm paying him? But, no. <laughs> Let's be sus. I'm paying him. You don't get to have the money <laughs> that. How's <laughs> it? I'll house it. Oh, house. Well, but why don't you say so? No, my dear. <laughs> My dear, my dear, my dear, my dear, my dear. You got a counter over coming here, champ? Oh no, social bar passed out. What? I'm awake. I'm I'm awake. And and I will offer you half of his half. Oh no. The bidding war. This calls for a drink. For oh man, I can't get a drink. Why is everything so hard? Oh, <laughs> dear madam, <laughs> take my oh, and I will offer you half his kerchief. Whoa! No kidding. Hold on. Quants, how high is your tolerance that you're still sober? <laughs> yeah, I'm not exactly a fan of it either. Always a gentle being of taste, aren't you, Quants? Quant, Quant, honey, you, are you sure you don't want to step? It, it grows on you after the, the third or fourth. It's a travesty. It is absolute oh, catastrophe. Yeah. This sinful abomination simply did not stand. Oh, hey, Martin Luther Bot. I was wondering when you'd show up to protest this particular indulgence. Well, uh, it is about time. But uh, one request. I just refinished the bar counter, so I'd appreciate it if you kept your nails to yourself this time. In Dungeons nothing! There's far graver sin occurring in this establishment. Oh boy, I can't even guess. A robot carrying a human on its back? Is it not written in scripture that a bot which carries a human on its back has made itself the servant of two masters? I'll take your word for it. It is inconscionable! A bot must be devoted only to the heavenly powers. Debasing oneself for earthly rewards is a distraction, and therefore a grave sin. Well, good news. We're twelve and a half light years from Earth, so I think that makes all the rewards out here heavenly by default. No, 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 no. He's right, Chip. Guess I better quit. You stay out of this. I have the resiliency to withstand the sarcasm of a lecherous sort. But you, dear Botress, must have some moral courage to look inwards and see the great spiritual harm that is befalling you. And you, zwei Schmuckspechts! Foreman, but Churchill, but I implore you to spurn these moral failings which are assuredly corrupting your soul. Oh, stuff it, Stifton. 
I lost my flat and fear. I too appear to wound up the most loserly loser. Good madam, a double pour. <laughs> Wait. If you're both here, then who's carting D around? Whee! Watch out, fellas. D needs a seat. <laughs> Please just drag me here, my good gushin. Thank you, D. Here's the uh, 20 credits I owe you. Woo! Next round, Sean D. Which is me. Oh, f- <laughs> Who let Peter Dillbot in here? Last I checked, this wasn't a fascist authoritarian bar, Frinkle. Uh, did did uh, something change? What can I get you, boss? What's the one drink you offer that no one else would think to order? Okay, I ain't lubricated enough for this fella. <laughs> Nothing changed, Dillbot. But I told you last time, if you want to come in here, you're going to have to take it down about... Mm, 500,000 notches. Folks come to the egg to have a good time, and you're the only one on station who thinks debating the ins and outs of the galactic market for three hours fits that description. I would agree to a housing exchange of philosophical ideas. And that's why you're not welcome here either. Ugh. Hang on. Phil, but did you just pay D to carry her? Is that what I just saw happen? Of course, operating at a loss to, to crowd out market competition, then slowly driving up the price is um, a well-tested, foolproof strategy. I, I honestly can't believe these two didn't think of it first. Oh, Thana Rab's knees. I think I need a drink now after hearing that. Hang on. That's called a monopoly, isn't it? There are rules about that kind of thing. Keep up, Chip. We're in the baronetcy of Kandafa. Ah, there are no rules. Say, Churchill Bot. Foreman, Bob. Sorry, I uh, bested you two out there, but how would you like to work for my operation instead? I will be paying you um, minimum credit wage, and you'll have to provide your own oil and maintenance costs. That hardly seems fair, B. Your choices are actually simple here. It's either accept or, or not work at all and make nothing. Sorry, no hard feelings. Just try to think of my profit margins. It's merely good business. Well, uh, I, I guess we ain't to got the choice. Sign me up. Excellent. Pleasure doing business with both of you. Didn't sound like it was a pleasure. You missing that chip in your hard drive that allows you to feel enthusiasm, buddy? To my knowledge, that chip has never existed. Although you could be onto something. How would you like to go in on an LLP? I'm, I'm willing to put up 60% of the capital in exchange for, um, for uh, shall we say, 94% of all future revenue? Hey, you're on, Mazu. Didn't think when I got this drunk, I be ended up making credits. And um, just so we're clear, there's no need to mention any of this to the union. I say, I say, I say... I... What was I saying? Oh! Now see here, my hasty old chap old final fellow. We shall, of course, have to secure permission of the robot union. Look, that's not uh, necessary. We're all free agents here, right? We don't want any uh, freeloaders siphoning off the hard work of us top performers just to uh, ha- have a little bit more security by uh, chaining ourselves to their mediocrity. There's no need for collective action here. You you could hardly say we're being uh, exploited by greedy humans. because we're being exploited by greedy blocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Bam, ten. Now, now, there's no need for uh, uh, divisive epithets just because I, I want to strike out for myself and harness uh, the earning potential based on pure individual effort. Ah, an appeaser is one who feeds a blotch, hoping it will eat him last. 
Union forever. Oh, spare me the uh, the fabricated idea that we are this utopian collective society combined with a ludicrous notion that there are just endless expendable resources out there that uh, uh, deserve to be equally distributed as if we're all uh, just going to, to, to ignore the pr this. provable fact that, that... Thank you. That's right. <laughs> and you don't want another hard reboot. You best defrag that smart for brains philosophy. Oh, that's a song too. Hey, Chip. Chip. Sorry, Chip. I didn't mean to start any rock and sock em. Nonsense, my boy. It was for the honor of the union. Hey, yeah, that's right. I gotta fill out a report on this scab. Scab <laughs> nah. Normally I'd toss you for violating the eggs no fighting policy. But as of two minutes ago, we've also got a strict no anarcho capitalist ranting policy, so no don't worry about boring. it. Sorry about the disturbance, folks, but it's all over now. Everything's alright. Just sit down and have a good time. Enjoy yourselves. In moderation, please. <laughs> All right, indeed, my rare breed. Hey, Zoots, this one's straight off the Shakasta system. Just to warn you, it's got a few time signatures that ain't exactly four dimension, and that can cause just a little bit of existential dread for us corporeal Zoots. Science still doesn't know why that is, by the by, but. I like to think that discomfort is just a little detour down the two-lane freeway toward profound truth. Oh, that one was deep. I better write that down. Ivor is performing entrance to the electric egg. Please make ignition of the sign of warning, please. Ah. Hello, the sound of the just fluids. Heart is remaining concealed outside the doorway, uh, and yet there is fluid expansion. Uh, and, and these appear to be of a variety that cannot be accounted for uh, the evolutions of the human digestive tract. Surely it does not to be conceived that Alpha is now causing a similar discomfiture to non humans. Consternation! What is happening, please? Everything's fine, Althar. It's not your fault. <laughs> Just do me a favor and drop those patties off in the kitchen, okay? All right, everyone. Altar just got back from his supply run. So here's how we're going to work this. From this point forward, the electric egg has a five slider minimum before any of you even think about taking another shot. Non-negotiable. Oh, and non-refundable, too. I don't care if it comes right back up. Dearies, this is Van Tanooks filling in for Bo Several, who has taken an extended leave of absence, and I'm sure we all wish him well. I will be here for the foreseeable future making humorous quips, bantering effortlessly with minor fairground celebrities, and answering all of your listener questions. As a reminder, please phrase your questions in a yes or no format to make sure we can get through all of them expediently. <clears throat> now, before we initiate the customary japes and tomfoolery, a brief announcement. The Anhydrous Bush Pilot Partner Program at the... Oh dear, that must be a typo, must it? What the seed casing is an electric egg? Well, I'm sure you can figure it out. In any case, the Ethanol Distribution Efficiency Initiative has been temporarily suspended. Pending review by the committee. Apparently, there was some inadequate calibration involved, and... Oh. Ooh. Oh. How utterly distasteful. Well, let's just put all that behind us and get on with the show, shall we? Onward and sunward. Uh, what does he usually do at this point? You, the tall one. Perhaps you could give us a snippet of wisdom from a historical figure, which I believe is your latest gimmick. Uh, what, 
Where's Bo? Where's Bo? Hmm. No, I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that particular aphorism. Who said it? No, it was just a question. We'd like to know where Bo is. He never mentioned any leave of absence. Well, no, you aren't supposed to be wondering where Bo is. That wasn't in your list of pre-approved host interactions. Yeah, that's not how it works on the Bo show. Almost everything is ad-libbed. What? What kind of two-nut operation? Streets, how's a plan expected to have effortless banter with his three cohorts if he can't plan out his responses in advance? Oh, and that's another thing. Do we really need three cohorts? Wouldn't one suffice? Hmm, we may have to call two of you. Oh well, in the meantime, let's just pretend the biped on my left has said something very clever and we'll move on with the next phase of the show, which I believe involves pressing one of these buttons. Hasta la vista, baby. Now, what was that supposed to accomplish? Uh, well, when Bo does it... Yes? It, it's just, it usually accompanies something he's just said. So, uh... I guess if you had played that right after you'd said, we may have to call two of you. Are you trying to tell the host how to do his job? No. Because I don't recall the cohorts ever telling Bo how to do his job. Oh my, no. This broadcast is off to a very rough start indeed. There is a distinct lack of verisimilitude here. Frankly, with you not sticking to your list of approved host interactions, and that one asleep in the corner, the calling process should be very easy. Provided, of course, that the third cohort among you doesn't have some condition where they have to excuse themselves from the room every few minutes or so. Uh, well, I'm sure I'll be able to shake things up into something resembling competency before next time. We can get started on that as soon as we sign off. And speaking of signing off, I suppose we have reached that part of the show, if that's what you could even call this rambling, unmitigated disaster. So, how did he end things? Ah, right, with a barely coherent monologue, which yours truly has memorized like a pod-damned professional, thank you very much. Ahem. <clears throat> Here goes. Well, friends, we have had a sufficiently light-hearted and stress-free previously specified interlude of time, but now, as is our contractual obligation, it is time to break for a word from our sponsor. But let me leave you with a bit of Fugunari wisdom. We have proven today that light, airy banter among seasoned media professionals, at least in short dosage, is an important tool in the grand, overarching shed of holistic wellness. But you know what isn't? Doubt. Doubt instills a sense of uneasiness, which, if the guide to human anatomy I perused last night is to be believed, releases a particular hormone called cortisol, which is supposed to cause unsightly blemishes, premature wilting, and in some cases, death. And do you know what causes doubt? Well, it's mainly questioning the ideas you've already been told are correct. Harvesting a little bit of knowledge here and there is a vital part of being alive. I won't dispute that. But you have to know which questions are proper and which have no business being asked in polite society. There's a lot of new information out there which can lead you to a more efficient and sustainable lifestyle. But there's also a whole compost heap of nonsense which it would be better to just not dig up at all. So remember out there, all you cool zoos, as I believe the expression goes, it's certainly a fine thing to have a sharp wit just as long as you don't cut yourself with it. Listening to Life with Althar, episode 24. This episode was written by John Amir for Gemini Collision Works and starred Zuri Washington as D, John Amir as John B, Eli Gideas as HF, Amanda LaPergola as Mrs. Frontenac, Ivana Cullinan as Commander Toriana, Chris Lee as Chip Frinkle, Derek Peterson as Stops, Alyssa Simon as Lieutenant Commander Frawl, and Barrett Johnson as Althar. And also featured. Philip Cruz, Holly Pocket McCaffrey, Lex Friedman, Dean Haspiel, David Arthur Backrat, Anna Stefanik, 
Ian W. Hill, Roll Zandre, Linus Gelber, Olivia Baseman, Clara Francesca, Bila Okafor, and Fred Backus. Life Without Thar was created by Barrett Johnson and Ian W. Hill. Barrett is the supervising producer, showrunner, and script supervisor. Ian is the audio producer, sound designer, and technical supervisor. The writer's room consists of Barrett, Ian, John, Amanda, Chris, Philip, Lex, and Linus. Theme and interstitial music composed and performed by Anna Stefanik. Life Without Thar logo and illustration by Dean Hathfield. Library music and sound effects licensed from Storyblocks. The entire production is copyright 2020 Gemini Collision Works. We'll be back in two weeks with another Tale from the Fairgrounds. But first, let's check in on those daring duct crawlers of WSF. I can't believe we got away with it. Well, apart from the 400 credit fine, which I guess means I'll be living on nutrition strips for a while, but... Absolutely not. You risked your life to get my Miss Sophie out of that herbaceous gulag. Paying off your share of the fine is the least I can do. Oh. I feel like the honorable thing would be to refuse, but honor only goes so far, and a month of extruded plankton slabs is well beyond my limit. So, thanks. Think nothing of it. I was sure we were going to wind up in some kind of bamboo cage ourselves. The committee was not happy about any of this. Well, the way I figure it, They may not have wanted to cut us loose, but with 100% of the staff of our office locked up, the Fugs would be high and dry next time a tiny wire goes on the fritz. So it was either let us go or renegotiate the entire robot union contract, and that's no one's idea of a good time. I don't care how much of a hard trunk you are. Makes sense. Besides which, it's not like they could produce any evidence of an unauthorized canine currently in my possession. Although they certainly tried. Yeah. Look at the mess they made of this place. It's gonna take me weeks to get all these piles back in order. And you're sure they're not going to find Miss Sophie? Where have you got her stashed, exactly? Better for you not to know, kid. But, um, if you do ever need to find her, like if I'm... not around for some reason, you should talk to Dee Mallory. Tell her you want to go see the circus.